next. Next, we look at two examples, example four and example five, where we'll have linear equations, but we'll be solving them with fractions involved. So just as we've done in the first three examples, we always deal with parentheses first. If there are any in the problem, we must clear them by using the distributive property. So here, in the very first step, we can distribute this one third into both of these terms. So that's what I wrote here, one third times three over four x plus one third times six. Now one third times three fourth, the threes will simply cancel leaving behind one fourth x. So that's what I have here. And then the three would go into the six two times, two times the one would give me just two. That's what I have there. The rest stays the same, we don't touch it. Now we have gotten rid of the parentheses or we've cleared them out. The next thing we see is there's a whole bunch of fractions floating around in the problem. Now, there is a way where you can solve the problem using the fractions themselves or dealing with the fractions themselves. I find that approach to be riddled with mistakes. Uh, why deal with fractions longer than you need to? So I always prefer to teach it this way. If you have other ways that you can be certain that you're doing it correctly, you're welcome to use other techniques. I'm partial to this one because it gets rid of fractions in the very first or second step. So the first thing we need to do is find the LCD, the least common denominator, is the number that cancels out all the denominators. Meaning, if I could multiply something here by the 3 fourths x, I need to get rid of this 4. What would that something need to be? Well, hopefully you're thinking four. Four would cancel the four, and that's what would get rid of it. Well, if I multiply the four by this fraction, would I also be able to get rid of the two? Two would go into four twice. Yeah, that works too. And I could multiply the same number here, four, same number here, same number here. So in this case, we see that the LCD is four. You could have also found a common denominator. A common denominator is just the product of all the denominators. So you could have simply multiplied four times two times four times this two. That will also work, but hopefully you recognize that four times two is eight, eight times four is 32, 32 times two is 64. Your problems, the numbers are getting much bigger. Will it work? 100% of the time. Are you making it unnecessarily more difficult? Also, yes. So it's a balancing act. Do you want to spend a couple of seconds thinking about the LCD? Or do you just want to be fast and not have to think about it at this stage, but then pay by making the number significantly bigger? So hopefully we all agree that the LCD is four. Now all I've done is multiplied each term of the equation by four. Notice it's each term, not just the terms that have fractions. The two doesn't have a denominator, I still have to multiply it by the LCD. Whatever you do to one term must be done to all the other terms as well. And the reason we do this is now I can clear all the fractions in one step. The four will cancel with the four, leaving behind just three X, so that goes there. The two goes into the four two times. Two times one is two, so that goes there. The four cancels with the four, so I'm just left with one X or just X. Four times two is eight, that goes there. Four, I'm sorry, two goes into four twice. Two times seven is 14, so that's what goes there. Now you'll notice I did not deal with the fractions at all. I did not take common denominators and then do all the stuff we did on the first day of class. You can just solve any equation that has fractions this way. Clear them out by multiplying each term by the LCD. And now we're down to a regular old linear equation that we've solved before. We move all the x terms to the left-hand side and all the non-x terms to the right-hand side. So this added x becomes subtracted when we move it to the left. The subtracted 2 becomes added 2 when we move it to the right. Remember again, we're using inverse operations. Next, we combine like terms. So 3x minus x would just give us 2x. 8 minus 14 is negative 6. And then in the next step, I combine these two like terms. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. 
Now we have a one-step equation that we can solve using inverse operations. So if two is being multiplied by the x, in order to get rid of this two, I would need to divide it over to the other side. So negative four divided by two gives us negative two. That is a potential solution. We don't know whether it's an answer or not, or we don't know whether it's the solution to this equation or not. We have to check it in the original equation. The original equation is always the one that's given to us in the problem, not one that we create. So I copied the original equation here, right there. And wherever I saw an x, which is here and here, I replaced it with negative 2. And now this just becomes a bunch of arithmetic. You have parentheses, you have to get rid of them first. You have to clear all the parentheses out. So uh, 2 would go into 4 twice. So you have a negative 3 over 2. That's what is right there. The negative 1 half stays. The 1 third stays. 3 fourth times negative 2 is the same as 3 fourth times negative 2, so I don't have to do it again. I just know from here the answer has to be negative 3 halves. So I put negative 3 halves here again. And then the 6 comes along for the ride. The negative 7 halves come along for the ride. Now we have another set of parentheses, this one. So we distribute the 1 third into both of these terms. So this comes along, this comes along. The 1 third gets multiplied by negative 3 halves. That's right here. And the 1 third gets multiplied by 6. That's right here. The 7 halves is coming along. Now the 3 can cancel with the 3, leaving behind negative 1 half, which is right there. 3 will go into itself once. 3 will go into 6 twice. 2 times the 1 gives us 2, which is right there. Now again, we have an equation that has fractions in it. So we got rid of parentheses first. How do we get rid of the fractions? We multiply by the LCD. And hopefully this one's even more obvious than the one before. All the denominators are 2. Well, with the exception of this one, but you'll see that all the non-1 denominators are 2. So how could I clear the fractions? I could multiply each term of the equation by 2 times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. Notice again, even though this is not a fraction, I still have to multiply each term by the LCD, not just the ones that have fractions in them. And the benefit of doing this, cancel, 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 cancel. So we're just left with negative 3 minus 1, which is negative 4, and negative 1 plus 4, which is 3, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. There we go. So we get a true statement when we take our potential solution, x equals negative 2, and we drop it into our equation. Again, this part is a requirement. You cannot just say that, oh, I got a potential solution. I'm certain that it's a solution. You have to check in the original equation. So because we plugged in x equals, two, x equals negative 2, our potential solution in the original equation, and we got a true statement as, at the end, we can say that x equals negative 2 has graduated and become a solution to the equation. And because the equation only has one solution, just x equals negative 2, nothing else, no other values of x will ever make this equation true or correct we say that this equation is a conditional. It has to satisfy the condition that x equals negative 2 in order for it to be true or correct.